Here's a review of chapter one's notes for the nutrition course. Now again, it's important that you study your notes in conjunction with your lecture textbook. These review, vid, these review videos are just that, review videos. They do not substitute for good study habits. Now, you'll notice that our, the notes are arranged in an outline format which more or less follows the book. Uh, I will refer you specifically to page numbers or figure numbers or things like that and be sure to look at those and consider those part of your notes. And we'll jump right into this. Uh, the first section is what is nutrition? Nutrition is the science that studies food and its effect on the body. Okay? Um, why is nutrition important? Well, as you already know, nutrition is one of several major factors that contribute to wellness. And of course, wellness is sort of a catch-all phrase describing uh, how well you are, the absence of disease, your overall uh, status of health. Now, nutrients themselves, we get to go into some definitions that are provided in your notes. Uh, for example, um, a nutrient itself is a chemical substance, a molecule found in food and contributes to health and growth and well-being. Uh, essential nutrients are nutrients that your body cannot manufacture and therefore it must be obtained from food. So not all nutrients are essential nutrients, but all, all essential nutrients are nutrients. Now, uh, an organic nutrient is a nutrient that is made of carbon-based molecules. Inorganic nutrients are not made of carbon-based molecules. For example, calcium is not carbon-based, it's calcium, it's inorganic. Macronutrients are nutrients that are needed in relatively large amounts. Micronutrients are nutrients needed in itty bitty amounts. Now, um, what is food good, uh, good for? You need food for energy for metabolism. You need building blocks. You are what you eat and you need the right chemical substances for normal biochemical function. Okay, so those are the three purposes of food. There are six categories of nutrients, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, vitamins, minerals, water. Those are the six categories of nutrients. Now, um, of the nutrients, three of them, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, provide energy. Be sure to go through the notes, read about the substances that I've provided here. You need to know the number of kilocalories per gram and so forth. Now, um, Although proteins are an energy source, proteins are primarily for building blocks. Much of the body is made of water and a pretty good chunk of the rest is made of protein. So even though protein is an energy source, its primary purpose is uh, structure and function of the body. Now, uh, alcohol is not a nutrient, but it too provides calories, 7 kilocalories per gram. Now the vitamins and the minerals are the micronutrients and you'll see the phrase throughout your book, micronutrients, they refer to vitamins and minerals. The difference is vitamins are organic, minerals are inorganic, okay? With vitamins, there are two basic categories, fat-soluble and water-soluble. The fat-soluble vitamins are vitamins A, D, E, and K. The water-soluble vitamins are vitamin C and the B-complex group. Fat-soluble vitamins are storable in the body. We don't quickly excrete them. So mega doses of fat-soluble vitamins can actually cause them to accumulate to toxic levels. This is known as a vitamin toxicity. Water-soluble vitamins are generally not storable and we do easily excrete them. So usually water-soluble toxicities uh, are, are quite rare. Yeah, you can induce one if you try hard enough, but generally it's not as big of a deal. Minerals are inorganic micronutrients. We often refer to these as the salts or the electrolytes, things like sodium, potassium, chloride, uh, calcium, iron, and so on and so forth. The minerals are subdivided into major minerals and trace minerals. Now, how much of each nutrient do you need? Well, there are various standards that exist. Uh, your notes mention some of them. Your book actually mentions more than your notes do. Uh, by the way, um, the notes is the primary list of information that I expect you to know for exams. There may be things that I don't cover in the notes. And if I don't cover them at all in notes, uh, chances are I don't test you over it. So you'll notice that I, I listed some of the nutrient uh, standards, but not all of them. I did list estimated average requirement. I did list recommended dietary analysis uh, allowance. I did list adequate intake. I did list 
tolerable upper intake level. You need to know the definitions of those things. Uh, by the way, RDAs and AIs are generally the same thing for all practical purposes. It's just that the RDAs are based on more research than adequate intakes are. And of course, the tolerable upper intake level, or UL, is the maximum average daily amount that's likely to pose no harm. The next section is on science and the scientific method. Now again, nutrients, uh, I'm sorry, nutrition is the science that studies food. Now I have a very short section here in your notes about the steps of the scientific method. Uh, an observation that lends itself to a, a question uh, and therefore that question can be tentatively answered as a hypothesis statement, an educated guess. But we need to use that hypothesis as a means to uh, make predictions and then test the hypothesis experimentally, gathering data, uh, come with a conclusion, either your data supports your hypothesis or your data refutes your hypothesis. Be sure to read through the book over this section as well. And of course, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, I also included in the steps, share the findings. See, when researchers finish their research, they share their findings. They publish their research, not just on the internet or in a popular magazine or newspaper, but in professional journals. And the same thing goes on with nutrition. So the primary research, uh, the real stuff, gets published by professional societies and professional journals from professional researchers. Which takes us to the next section. Who are the experts and who aren't the experts? So be sure to go through the notes on examples in the book on examples of uh, who the experts are. They tend to be educated, they tend to be credentialed, they, they belong to professional organizations, they publish in, in the organization's professional journals and so on and so forth. Um, because there's a lot of misinformation out there. Now, uh, there's a number of professional organizations out there that deal with nutrition either directly or indirectly, and that pretty much uh, takes us through chapter one.